So deprecation and end of life for Chevron Talents. Uh, we finally announced this. We've been teasing uh, that the deprecation is coming, uh, but uh, we wanted to actually make sure that all of the internal organizations and plan is in uh, locked. So we're able to give you full lifecycle deadlines and all of that uh, as part of this announcement. We did announce this uh, in end of uh, November or early December. So a few weeks back, but we want to make sure that everybody is up to date on what's happening. And we'll give you tooling which will make you sure that you know is SharePoint add-ins being used within your tenant. So there are tooling already available today which you're able to use and, and execute which will give you the summary of how add-ins are being used which is super super important. Now what does this mean in practice? So SharePoint add-ins was introduced back in uh, uh, 2012, uh, so more than 10 years ago. Uh, we did one of the feedback what we got related on deprecating SharePoint add-ins was like, well, yeah, this is a great sign of Microsoft uh, shutting down awesome things. Well, how many SaaS providers in the world can say that they have extensibility model which is supported over 10 years? Not that many. So again, it's 2023, we're giving you now heads up that we will deprecate and there's an end of life SharePoint add-ins. We're not shutting it down immediately. We'll give you a heads up that it's shutting down in April 2026. So if you're using SharePoint adding model, you should be figuring out how do you actually modernize that technology stack, which was introduced 2012. It is outdated technology. We want everybody to use newer technologies like Power Platform and SharePoint Framework and all of the, the different options which are available. It's time to you know, move forward. Um, SharePoint Framework is by default uh, the kind of a modernization target for UX extensibility, but of course, depending on what kind of capability it is, maybe the Power Platform is more suitable. Depends on, depends on the case. The key here is to understand the dates. First of all, right now, that's where we are today. So we did announce this by end of November, uh, where, where we announced that the SharePoint add-in uh, model is going to be retired and the Azure ACS retired as well. Technically, Azure retired ACS, which is the authentication model already many, many years ago. We in SharePoint, uh, we actually kept it alive for the SharePoint adding model and for the workflows. But now we are announcing that all of that is going to go away. The timeline will look as following. So starting from March 2024, within within uh, next quarter, uh, we are stopping accepting new SharePoint add-ins in the store as a submissions. Um, so existing adding uh, capabilities within the store still work, but we are stop accepting new submissions in the store because again, adding model is going to go away. Why would you get your offering in the store? Because that makes no sense. Uh, then starting from July 24, add-ins can no longer be installed from a store. That is a pretty fast timeline, but again, uh, add-ins are not super widely used from the store. Add-ins are primarily used uh, as a site loader capability within a tenant. So we're not seeing this as a massive challenge uh, for the most of the most of the uh, our providers and most of the customers. Then on tw after 12 months of this initial announcement, and the new tenants can no longer use add-ins anymore. So if, if customers are creating new tenants or you're creating a new tenant, uh, they can no longer use add-ins and they can no longer use Azure ACS anymore. Azure ACS, for example, is being used when you use app rec new or registering and adding within a SharePoint site. So that's all going to go away in new tenants. Any existing tenant will actually have all of these capabilities still live until April 2026. So we're giving you two and a half uh, years almost heads up that the capability is going to go away. So add-ins will stop working in April 2026 and Azure ACS will stop working in 20, April 2026. And it's important that everybody is figuring out, okay, what do I need to do by that time? Uh, and also SharePoint 2013 workflows will stop working because there's a dependency between ACS and those workflows. Again, we have more and more capabilities, so this should not be coming as a massive shock. We have Power Automate, we have SharePoint Framework, we have uh, SaaS uh, capabilities other than SharePoint add-ins available. Now, on the SharePoint adding model retirement, uh, the storyline is relatively simple. For SharePoint hosted add-ins, uh, we're basically saying use SharePoint Framework solution as the default entry. Again, it might be a Power Platform is a suitable one for some of the kind of scenarios. Definitely welcome. SharePoint Framework uh, is not going to go away. We have tens of millions of monthly active users for custom SharePoint Framework solutions, and we keep on investing on that one and evolving that forward. So it is a safe bet, uh, getting a lot of lot of uh, future uh, years uh, in ahead of it. 
provider hosted add-ins, uh, that basically means that you are looking into doing a SaaS solution or a web application secured by Azure AD. Uh, so not as a provider hosted add-in, but as a application registered in intra ID, intra ID or Azure AD. That's kind of the direction where we're heading. Uh, maybe the one thing to call out there is that the remote event receivers are impacted as well. Um, and the intention there is to use webhooks. There's no exact match for the, some of the remote event receiver capabilities, but we're looking into providing you additional guidance and input uh, around these things in the future as well. On the Azure ACS retirement, this is relatively straightforward as well. Uh, for tenant level permissions, we do have an Azure AD application or Entra ID registration. You're able to do similar level uh, granting of the permissions in those. And then there's a type B, uh, so the so-called type B uh, permissions, which are web level permissions and list level permissions in add-ins. And that one will get an update relatively soon by definitely by way ahead of the, the end of life for add-ins. So RSC resource specific consent uh, will be available for uh, SharePoint all up and that will give you the permissions to grant permissions on web level or in a list level as well. So that's coming relatively soon as well. So as a summary uh, within the last minutes, a quick recap. Uh, so November 2023 announced July 24, SharePoint Dynamics cannot be installed from Marketplace or Store anymore. Uh, you can install them if you, they are within your app catalog, but you cannot acquire them from Store anymore. November, November 2024, SharePoint Dynamics uh, not used anymore for new tenants. April 2026, no longer uh, in other tenants. How do you want to do this? You want to use the, the assessment tooling, uh, which will give you insights where the add-ins are being used within your tenant. Then we have additional guidance available for you to understand, OK, I found this kind of a functionality. What do I need to do now? That guidance exists. And then you're able to actually disable uh, the add-in model usage, the ACS model usage whenever the time is right for your tenant using SharePoint PowerShell uh, settings. Our guidance and assessment tooling is available at AKMS Assessment Add-in ACS. Uh, thank you, David, for copying that, that, those links also within the chat. That's quickly recapping on that one. Thank you.